everybody, welcome back to another episode of GG. As always, I got my buddy Morgan over here. Um, today, we're going to be talking about common gaming trends. So, my first question is, what is a trend that you see constantly within the last 10 years or so? Uh, to me, I think it's going to be the connectivity of uh, people in like neighborhoods, right? And it gets to... Um, online services, man. I think that that's uh, it's becoming an issue for some and others. It's you know becoming pretty nice to be able to connect with those people. With it's uh, like looking for group capabilities on Xbox, or uh, if you have uh, Discord, you're searching for people to play with. But like couch co-op and uh, the segregation between that and the online capabilities. So you so you're saying is that there is less of it. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to follow what you're saying, because I think right. that within the last 10 years, that we've, we've had online for a while, so that's not really a big thing. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel that's like a trend as it is. So like a trend that I would think that, like, I would say right now is first-person shooters have been in for at least 10 years, and mm -hmm. it just hasn't died. And, like, everybody's a casual. In my mind. Yeah. Like, everywhere I go online, like, everyone is a casual. Yeah, and, and you see that it's like a lot of people uh, play first person shooters now, um, and the younger generation don't have that um, same experience with their siblings playing couch co ops. You know, you okay. have one yeah. sibling in another room that's on the Wi Fi, internet, whatever, and they're going through Fortnite matches or zombie matches or whatever your uh, favorite co op game is. And the same thing with the dilemma of the uh, cooperative capabilities with like the, the new Halo, Halo 5. Yeah. Not having uh, cooperative capabilities. I heard it was supposed to. Right. So it was supposed to, but they said, oh, it wasn't going to take too much time. And uh. online dependency was the big thing. And so I mean, these trends have led to more people playing single player uh, co op, uh, not co op, but single player games online uh, yeah. with their friends. Or uh, you know, just kind of and just getting rid of that community. that co-op couch co-op work you know playing together in the same room kind of thing. Yeah, same room type stuff. You know, okay. to me, I kind of seen it when it was like games like Borderlands started to drop. You know, you could play split screen co-op, but then it was more intriguing with the glitches that you would find online cooperatively, uh, duplicating weapons or shields, whatever. You know. Okay. So, I've seen that a lot. Um, a lot of people straying away from um, LAN parties, more I miss LAN parties. Exactly. Dude, I mean, playing Halo as a LAN party was probably one of some of the best times I've ever had playing video games. So right. that is, that's a good point. I really like that. Um, so another trend I've noticed, though, it was in the past uh, 10 years, maybe even more, is the degrading of music in video games. Like, their thematic element has died out. Now, I'm not, it's not gone, but I feel like there's less emphasis on, on, on music. So go back to Halo. Like Halo is like a, like, a, like a gold standard for so many things. How many times has anybody just heard that da 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 and they instantly know what it is and that like got you pumped. That, they made a video game album and people would buy it. Yeah. Like that music is dying and I, I don't know why. Exactly. So uh, it's interesting you bring that up. You know, I grew up playing Activision and never saw Stony Hawk games. Mm. Their soundtracks were kind of like the soundtrack to my childhood. <laughs> so it, I, it, yeah, I get you on that one. Exactly. As, as well as with like Rock Band, uh, Guitar Hero. Yeah. You know, they really kind of set a standard for, you know, these games are going to have good soundtracks. And then once you get into the more cinematic fields of gaming, um, AAA titles like Call of Duty mm -hmm. or uh, Assassin's Creed or the, the newest Halo that has like a, I believe a Japanese composer who tried to do the same thing that, um, oh, I can't think of his name, um, oh my goodness, um, I know it's Mike Salvatore and, um, goodness gracious, he's super <laughs> famous, the guy that did all of the Halo music, so. Oh, okay, I know who you're talking about, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, so, um, he was supposed to do the music for Destiny, and it's like, they cut him, and you can tell, like, you know, Destiny will take thematic points from the music of Halo, and try to do the same thing, or Halo 5 wasn't the same, and you see the same trend with, like, other games like Gears of War 4 and yeah. 5, 
you know, they have the same type of music, but it's just not the same. Yeah. And the same thing goes for, like, when Assassin's Creed 1 and 2 came out, you could see that they had, like, their own, like, theme song going on. Yes. But Especially at Assassin's Creed 2, when, like, when that dropped, like, that was, yes. like, number one, in my opinion, and it, it still had good music for battling and everything like that. It really engaged mm -hmm. me. So, I mean, it's just like that, that's a huge downward trend, and I don't know why it's going away especially like big games like Fortnite like there's mm -hmm. there's there's no music there's yeah. just a bunch of you know sound effects and everything else but there's not this element that can really bring you in and i guess that makes sense because it's a battle royale game so it's super short or you know it, it doesn't make you know a lot of sense to have that in there but mm -hmm. i yeah. would like to see that come back right you know so it, it's interesting a lot of people get nostalgic with the video games live you know that moving concert of different video games that have OSTs yeah. that are really good and they like that so what i thought was interesting is like you know new composers for like zelda's breath of the wild they took like a lot of key theme music pieces from different zeldas and kind of slowed them down or sped them up yeah or just redone them but in the same classical way that you know okay. and people found out quickly easter eggs all around you know they would speed up i think it was like zelda's lullaby or like the hyrule um overworld theme okay. it was like slow down and then you would fast forward the track and you could hear that classic tune so it was very interesting to me but you know games like tetris mario uh even you know zelda what was it uh super nintendo era we had I think link to the one. past Yes, that had a lot of music to it, and it's good. I really liked the, yeah. the first Zelda too. It had that 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 like the most like known song in the video game. I feel in history. Dun, 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 dun. Like everybody knows that. Yeah, it's it's and moving, it, man. Brought, and it is, and it and like I said, and it just brought you in. So, yeah. aside from music going down, um, what's another trend that you've seen that is happening? That just this in the last ten years, I guess, good or bad. Right, so to me, I think it's campaigns. Campaigns for video games recently haven't had as much uh, substance, I would say. Um, you know, Assassin's Creed Odyssey probably has a pretty good uh, substantial campaign, but when it comes to being canonically in the timeline of what they have set up previously, yeah, then you get the clash of people saying, oh, well, it's not... Um, it's not in the same timeline. It doesn't follow these sets of rules that they've set up. So games like that that are still finding their way, they might have a good campaign, but then it clashes. Or like Halo 5's campaign was short and sweet. I think it was like 10 missions. It was garbage. What are you talking about? That Halo so, 5 is trash. Exactly. You know, and it sucks because it's like, I'm a fan of the multiplayer, but then the campaign, it sucks. So to I, me, thought the camp, I thought the campaign and the multiplayer were trash. Just bad. Because of the monetization, all the crap that they threw in there. Trying to call it like battle points or whatever the hell that crap was. Yeah, requisitions. Requisitions, and it's actually, if you could buy. I was like, no. Yeah, that's, hey, you're, you're right, taking man. Halo and you're ruining it. So to me, <clears> the, the biggest people that are doing campaigns right in the early days when they bought the rights to Fallout was Bethesda. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hey, Fallout man, they put out Doom. And Vegas. That was a, that was a good campaign. That's exactly that what was I'm a good saying, campaign, man. man. So, yeah, the Doom 2016's yeah. campaign, even Doom 3 back in 2004. Before it, uh, it software, it was it was it wasn't bad, it. but I think it was just the gameplay kind of messed with that one. Yeah. So man. now, gameplay. I mean, story for like a lot of RPGs are still doing very well. Yeah. So like that's always been a thing though, because also you know RPGs have very good story. Like the Persona series, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of their main things. Huge hits for people. Man. That's what it is. Yeah. But the funny thing is, a lot of developers think, I guess, that we should move away from it because what. The battle royale games are doing, but right. people love story. Action, action, action is yeah. a lot of people are then trying action to is milk, cool. milk it. But yeah, you can't you can't milk that cow forever. You gotta understand, like people want more substance. Right. And see that's what I'm saying. It kinda of, it brings back to uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the new monetization, um, pay to play kind of things within their campaign. <laughs> and then you can buy weapons, but at the same time you can make weapons that are better than what you're gonna buy. So then why would you even put that in there? 
Exactly. It's just you're buying a skin or like you buy like a flaming horse or what have you. That's stupid. But to me, it's like when you keep it simple, stupid. Games like <laughs> Wolfenstein, man. The new Wolfenstein games that have been coming out besides Youngblood. Youngblood. Yeah. Don't say Youngblood. No, 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 don't no. say Youngblood. It doesn't even count as Wolfenstein, man. You know what I mean? So it sucks at that outrage, the outcry on that one. But yeah. I would say the other ones that follow BJ Blazkowicz, like, dude, oh, those yeah. are great Absolutely. campaigns. You didn't need monetization. They were lengthy. They had secrets, puzzles, collectibles. So yeah. it, was, it was really good. Man. Super engaging. That. Like, you wanted to look around and see what else was in the world. Exactly. So to me, one of the last campaigns um, that I had recently finished within the past year was the Halo 3 ODST. Wait, 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 wait. You just back, finished that now? So going back and replaying it. Oh, OK. I was going to say. The Master Chief Collection, when they added it for free, okay. if you have, I think it's like over 500 or if at least played ODST, yeah. they added it to your MCC for a free edition. So with uh, 343 kind of doing this and then soon to add Reach, I'm going to be replaying that. And, uh, yeah, Reach, it, Reach is like one of the pinnacles, man. I exactly. think 2, 3, and Reach are like the number one. Yeah, like the, the story was great, even though 2 and 3 for Halo was supposed to be one, but it was too long. Mm -hmm. So the ending on 2 was kind of upsetting. But 2 and 3 were a great story. Exactly. Reach was a great story. So we finally saw from the book that they wrote earlier like what happened. And everybody died except for two was one guy. I can't remember who it was. The Asian Spartan. Yeah, yeah June. Uh, you don't know what happened to him. At least I don't know what happened to him. I didn't yeah. follow any of the So if you read Onyx, you'll, you'll find Oh, okay. See, I didn't know. Yeah, I was like, what? Demonic, so, you, but, oh, side note, Emil went out like a badass. Dude, damn I'm straight. ready to go. Are you? And he just, damn straight, man. So, anyway, that was, uh, that was great. Um, yeah. So, so um, to me, there, there's a few other things that people aren't really appreciating with uh, the campaigns and the well, the lack that we see right now with other games like Half Life that have just been kind of like vapor, you know, vaporwave dreams right now of like when are we going to see Half Life again? Games like that are like uh, Fear, you know. Fear first Fear was so so good yeah and it had this ominous tone with the music as well the campaign and the music it was just like awe cinematic Holy and, it, and crap, it tied man. it all together being a video game it was so good but to me you know with xbox like we had talked about in a previous episode it was uh they're kind of lacking right now so to me kind i'm excited to see kind of. <laughs> you know, i like my xbox don't get me wrong but i also like my playstation so yeah. with um me i'm kind of new to ps4 i've had it for only maybe a few years so there's a lot of catching up I got to do, even with God of War. Still even haven't even finished the new one. So I know that one's doing good, and Sony's really putting out quality first uh, party titles yeah. with good campaigns, and not a lot of them need monetization. So. No, because if you put that time in that, instead of taking your developers to say, hey, let's put this small crap in here so we can get like a couple extra bucks, you're gonna have such a better experience, you're gonna have a better fan base, and people are gonna wanna come back, they're gonna talk to it with other people, and then that's going to broaden it so that you can have more money in return, maybe a sequel. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's no reason to be doing stuff like that in my exactly. mind. Exactly. So. so, and one of the craziest things to me that I've seen recently was people that promise things for a release. Wow, uh, that is a master. huge, huge trend. That is, like, that is the number one. Like, No Man's Sky when that came out. Hey, no monetization in Halo 5. Hey, we're going to have a good story in Halo 5. No, like everything lasts like 10. That is, that is huge. That is probably the number one right there. The yeah, number yeah. one. And let me ask you this. <laughs> let me ask you this, man. How many times have we been suckered in as gamers to like whether it be the No Man's Sky issue or these re-releases people have been doing for the remasters of like Crash Team Racing. Oh, Racing. they had, yeah, and they're like, we're not going to put monetization in there. And then you had to buy stuff. What oh, the man. absolute crap, man. What is that about? You know uh, what I mean? so, I, I think it still goes back, like I said, they just, they think that they can bring in more money. But the funny thing is like a lot of these remasters or even remakes in some cases, the fan base is already so big and we, it came from the 90s era's nostalgia, let's be real here, the boom. That was the biggest boom in the last, like, I can't remember how many years. So we all have, like, this huge nostalgia factor of PlayStation, Nintendo, and everything that came up. So if you remaster that game, it's already going to sell. The first class edition for Final Fantasy VII has been sold out for a while. Mm -hmm. Doom 2 has been sold out for a while. 
Uh, and that's not a remaster though, but you know I mean? Crash Team Racing remake was like, out, it was boom, it sold out because the, the original Crash 3 that they, they put out, that sold well. Yeah, the Insane Trilogy. Yeah, right? yeah, so there was no need for that. Exactly. They're just being greedy. They, they know we're going to buy it, and I think they're just taking advantage of the nostalgic gamers of, and then that now because gaming is so big, like it's becoming a norm and being slightly accepted into the common world that they'll do that knowing that we're going to buy it. And it pisses me off. And it, and it sucks, but it's good to see some of them bounce back. You yeah. know, whether it's uh, what's his face with Hello Games, can't think of his name. Yeah. I mean, I'm not good with names today, but forgive me. Um, so that guy, uh, I think it's like Sean something. So, yeah. I can't remember that guy. But he's promised to release all the DLC currently. Um, that's going to be coming out soon. And it's going to be free. The same thing with Bungie and their separation with Activision. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. And hopefully these trends don't become as toxic as they have been. Because, yeah. man, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm about and worn out with all of this, <laughs> uh, all this crap, man, of the lies, the deceit, the, the, the gambling, the hidden gambling. Yeah. You know? EA's shasty, uh, shysty, oh, crappy yeah. stuff, man. I don't know what these people are smoking, but it's it's bad news, man. That's it's how they do it. News. So either way, thanks for coming on uh, for another episode. I appreciate. It. So that's it for this episode, and as always, thanks for watching.